Hello everybody, John here, and today on To The Garage, I answer the question, what have I bought? Hello everyone. For those of you who are new to the channel, um, To The Garage is a program all about things I get on with, tinkering around in my garage with my vehicles. I'm into Jags in a big way, so there's a lot of videos on my XK8, but I'm also into camper vans, motorhomes in a big way too. And everybody who does follow the channel know I don't do clickbait. So yes, bit of a surprise, bit of a shocker guys. I have sold Ruby, my 2007 Rapido A-Class motorhome, and I have sold Alfie, my 2014 T5.1 pop-top camper. And I did sell both of those to fund the purchase of one vehicle. And with no more ado, let's just show you what I've bought may surprise quite a lot of you. Welcome to the fleet. This is a new acquisition. This is Jazzy. Jazzy is a 2014 Fiat Ducato Maxi based IH630RL. Now you're gonna to have to excuse the weather, the fact that the vehicle's not very clean. I've been hanging around now for about, I think a week, looking for an opportunity to film this on a day when I can give the van a wipe over and a polish and have a bit of nice sunlight and no wind to put a drone up and show you some nice artistic shots. It just ain't gonna happen in any, <laughs> any reasonable time frame. So here we are. So as I said, many of you are gonna be asking yourselves why, what the hell, what's gone on? Uh, I will get to that as soon as I step inside and it's a bit quieter. But just while we're outside, so the Ducato base vehicle is the, is the extra long version of the Ducato. So long wheelbase and then extra overhang at the rear, bringing her to a 6.3 meter length. She's got the 150 horsepower multi-jet engine. She's in beautiful condition, almost mint. There's a couple of exceptions and I'll point them out, the things that I know anyway. Even if I bring you guys down to an artistic sill shot, you're going to see that this near 10 year old van is practically pristine. So there is a small mark there. And that's because she used to have a bicycle rack attached and I guess pedaled off the bike or something has scuffed the back. And the other thing is I'll demonstrate by showing you the front. It looks at first glance like it's got a different nose on to the rest of the bodywork. That is because She's nine years old, the plastics have faded, and I have been experimenting with a new treatment for black trim. And I have done the first couple of stages on the nose of the vehicle. It's not a quick fix, it's a long-term permanent, well, semi-permanent fix, everything's semi-permanent. Um, 
and you can see the difference in colour. But because the weather's been so bad, I've not been able to finish it off. So yeah, she's essentially just uh, black plastic. So I've faded to a grey. They're not too bad, but they're not perfect. And I know there's many of you are going to have some questions straight away about what I'm using and how it's working. But uh, give me a, a week or so because I want to make sure this stuff really works before I start telling people how great it is. It's not what I did on a previous video on the Volkswagen T4, which was a textured spray paint. This is something very different and it's not back to black or, you know, any of the oil based techniques. So we have an electrically retractable step guarded by its own mud flap. Uh, central locking all round as you'd expect. We have a Thule Ominster Swedish made wind out awning. Double glazed windows all around the back. Onboard underslung LPG gas, uh, 20 litres. We have a tow bar with seven pin electrics. And what we have is a very reasonable sized boot. Um, I know it's a bit full and you can't really see, but if you know that there's a two tables in there, a Kodak, two deck chairs, this is a delivery basket of the sort that Asda and uh, home delivery folk use, and that's got all the cables and things. It gives you a sense of the size anyway. But yeah, that's all in place. Cruising down the other side, we have the outlet for the Truma water heating and space heating. Um, outlets for fresh water and wastewater. We have onboard fresh water tank and onboard wastewater tank, both are underslung. Electric hookup point, toilet cassette door, obviously fridge venting. That's for filling the freshwater tanks. Some nice alloys. And brand spanky new tyres, which I've just put on. And I've got Kumo Protran KC53s for van fans. And now I'm going to get inside and tell you why all this has happened. And I'll give you a bit of a tour. Oh, it's a little bit better in here. It's gotten really cold, really quick. Uh, I think we're in for a bit of a bitter winter this year. Okay, so, so hi Gracie. Everybody's a Gracie fan these days. Hello everybody. Um, so, me and Gracie are sat in our new IH motorhome. Why has all this happened? That's the first question. And what did, what did the other two vehicles do that was so wrong and upset us? Nothing is the answer. So let's get start with the A-Class. Um, why did we have the A-Class? We had the A-Class and we bought that two and a half years ago, something like that because we wanted a um, holiday home, something that we could use for our family holidays that really was the lap of luxury. And of course, we've got to have an engine because have you ever met me? And we found Ruby and bought her and really fell in love with her. So big motorhome for UK, 
standards. A-class, so no tin work on the outside, all bespoke bodywork. And she had a lot going for her. Really spacious, really comfortable, both to drive and to sleep in. Um, road presence. We love the A-class driving experience because you have the enormous windscreen and panoramic view of everything that's going on all the time. Really easy to drive because comfortable, uh, light, actually more aerodynamic than most coach builds. And you don't have judgment issues about width. The windows are the width. You can see the wing mirrors. They're the only thing that sticks out. How long is it going forward? The base of the windscreen plus six inches. Big, square, really, really enjoyed everything about that from that point of view. Where were the negatives? And we knew this when we got into it, to be fair. The negatives were always going to be that uh, parking her was an issue because again, UK standards, she's a big vehicle. When you get to your chosen campsite, which you'll have arrived at in the lap of luxury, you might want to go off on a bit of an excursion, tour the local sites, visit local villages, etc. The A-Class is just too big to do that on UK roads. The B road experience, if you like, is no good. And yeah, lots of people do manage it. I'm not one of those people. But uh, parking up in small towns and villages in a motorhome like that is tricksy. And we got around it to a great extent by having Snoopy at our bath and getting her converted to be a flat tow car. And we towed her along behind Ruby, which meant we had a tender a dinghy, if you like, to take off from our yacht in to go and explore local areas. And that really does work. It's a brilliant system. The downsides of that arrangement are that you can't go backwards. Ignore what everybody says. If you've got a flat tow vehicle, then you can't go backwards. You might get away with pushing back a yard in a perfectly straight line, but they work by the caster angle on the front wheels of the towed vehicle, steering the car as you drag it along. The reverse does not work. The wheels will kick and move around and drag the vehicle sideways and you'll damage things quite easily if you try to go backwards round bends. So that's a little bit of a niggle. It also meant that on the journey to places, you're limited for places to pull up and stop. Motorway services are usually fine. Um, but you're not going to do a little diversion and drop off somewhere if you've got a tow car on the back, unless you absolutely know the car park is great and big and you can you definitely drive through and never have to reverse. It's all just a little bit of a, of a pain from that point of view. Then we had Alfie, my Volkswagen T5. The point of Alfie was I work for myself. I'm a consultant. I work all over the country and I spend a lot of nights in hotels. Hotels are expensive. I don't particularly enjoy the hotel experience. Um, I try to eat not better, but a bit cleaner than you can easily in most hotels you inevitably end up eating stuff that you don't necessarily want. Um, so having my own accommodation, own facilities to cook is a huge advantage. Plus we had COVID come along and COVID meant that accommodation was challenging. So having my own facilities was a lot better all round. And Alfie, the Volkswagen T5 did that really well. And as a vehicle, the T5 is pretty car-like. Um, it's a lot taller, obviously, than a standard car, a lot squarer, uh, a little noisier. But it's not really that much of a compromise to drive one of those compared to a car. So really enjoyed that. 
but we we weren't ever going to use Alfie as holiday accommodation for myself and Joe. And we're both as bad as each other, but Joe particularly just doesn't want to go on holiday in a pop-top camper van. She likes and enjoys having all the facilities and mod cons. So having a, a bathroom and a shower facility and you know you can wander around if you feel like it in the night is is all part of the holiday experience and so we're less camper people than we are motorhome people so Alfie only ever got used for that and we found ourselves actually with three vehicles that were very much tied together you couldn't really change any one of them without affecting the equation so if we decided to change Alfie for a nice saloon car then I wouldn't be able to use the A-class for all of my work accommodations so I'd be back in hotels if we decided that the if we decided that the R bath wanted to be moved on because we fancy something different then we'd lose the dinghy to tow behind the yacht because all of the modifications to allow it to be towed are in the car, not the motor home. And that vehicle has to necessarily be small to be easy to tow. Gracie, come around here. So they were all sort of intertwined with each other and it didn't really feel right for a family that, you know, we used to have in a few cars in our fleet not because of need necessarily, because we love cars. And we do swap and change quite a lot because it's a part of our hobby. And they were kind of locked together. The last point in time that made us really think was we were actually away uh, on our Norfolk excursion, uh, sat in the lap of luxury in Ruby, looking at other vehicles around us and just weighing up you know what would you change if you did change ruby and we really loved everything about it but we did say we chose that layout that interior style which is kind of a dinette um with a fixed bed at the back because of the number of belted seats it provided um we wanted to be able to carry our family around with us and to go on excursions at the time my dad was still around and just coming out of hospital and we had great plans and you know this was all going to happen um never did and back in hospital and then sadly passed away um so the fact that we got two double beds in the a class never really came to to be needed um we have used it a few times with family to take them on day trips but as a day trip vehicle, she's quite big. So did we actually need those extra seats? And much as she got a separate shower and a separate toilet across opposite sides of a corridor, taken individually, there's not a lot of space in those. They're quite cramped. They only really work when you open them together and use them as one space. And we didn't really do that. So we started the cogs whirring on how you could replace Ruby and we didn't come up with anything any better that was affordable. Um, but what we did come up with was the plan of if only we were able to have one vehicle, which was a holiday home. Plus, it could be used for, let's say, 75 or 80 percent of my work trips as accommodation and transport then that would open a whole new category to us. And that's where we came to the conclusion that, you know what, the largest vehicle where it's sensible to drive on a daily basis is a panel van. A panel van can get into most company car parks um, because contractors, because delivery drivers, all the rest of it. Um, Panel vans can be quite luxurious. Panel vans can be seen in every supermarket car park around the country. You know, people can use them. You can find spaces to park them. No, it's not as easy as the T5, but you walk a little further, you can find a place to park it. You don't necessarily need to tow anything because you can go out for day trips in a panel van. 
but we really didn't want to come down from our lofty luxury levels. So once we'd started to think this way, we started looking at panel plans more seriously. I thought, oh, maybe I'd like to build one and I would have loved to build one and I may still build one at some point in the future. But the reality of doing it to a very high standard is you will spend a lot of money. Second hand pre-built panel vans are as cheap, if not cheaper, than building one to a very high standard. Once we started investigating the panel van conversions themselves and the layouts, we decided that a rear lounge layout was actually what we wanted. We wanted a good degree of the space to be usable for us to relax and enjoy ourselves. You're in the UK, you get a lot of bad weather. Sitting and looking through the windows at what's going on is a big part of uh, the experience. Uh, we still wanted to have a toilet and a shower. We wanted a full usable kitchen and we wanted that feeling of luxury and good furnishings rather than self-converted, make do and mend. So once we started looking at the market, we quickly came to the conclusion that the only panel van conversion that hit all of our buttons was an IH. And if you're into panel vans and you're into camper vans, you'll probably know. But IH stands for Ian Hartley. He's the managing director and designer of IH motorhomes. And they really are designed. They are styled. And they are very, very expensive. Worth every penny, but they are very expensive. Um, you're going to spend about £90,000 typically if you go to look for a new panel van from them. But it will be pretty much bespoke to you and how you want it based off the back of two or three general base designs. We thought, right, we don't need new, we can't afford new, and started the search for an IH rear lounge 630 that was um, a little older, but in really good condition. And we found Jazzy. And Jazzy has only done 23,000 miles, has only ever had one owner, is low spec by IH standards, which still means that she's beautiful and really well equipped. So I'm gonna give you a little tour around our new vehicle that is replacing both the A-Class and the T5, and will eventually mean that Snoopy, the Arbath, can and will move on, because we've had some great fun out of her, but we could do with having a four-door, more practical family car on the drive for many reasons. Okay, let's try and give you the tour. So, Pretty standard Fiat cab, except remis blinds on the side and front windows. So let me just do that. And you've got blinds. And the same on the windscreen. They uh, retract into the A-pillars very neatly. Uh, the van is carpeted throughout with IH branded nice plush carpet. I've got two tables in the boot, but this is an IH, so you're going to have all the bells and whistles. Just open that like that. And it gives you one coffee table, beer table, wine table to have under your awning. And when you finish with it, you just fold it up and it retracts. Beautiful. One of the outlets for the blown air heating is there. I'll just close the door because it's quite noisy and windy today. That step, by the way, is retracted using this button here, 
but if you start the van, it retracts, which is brilliant. So we have our cab area. <clears throat> Beautiful, comfortable seats, embroidered with IH everywhere. Half leather, which is typical in IH vehicles. Full leather is an option. We have a head unit, radio, media player, cab air conditioning, cruise control, six speed manual. And having covered quite a few miles in this already, I can tell you this is a nice comfy driving position. Not restricted in how far back you can push back the seat, unlike quite a lot of conversions. Immediately above the cab, we have this stylish little uh, piece of cloth, which equally is to prevent you from bumping your head, or at least prevent it from hurting as much. And a top locker, which we use to keep our bedding in. <clears throat> so we've got a king size quilt up there and four pillows fit no problem at all. It's carpeted on top, insulated, and there's a plastic tray that the whole thing is sitting on. So nice and clean and easy to get things in and out. We have solar power on the roof. So we've got a solar charge controller there, just monitoring what's going in and going out and allocating power as required. Carbon monoxide alarms. Pantry. Very generous. Nice deep shelves with lips and returns. All the doors in our van have this finish called Violet. And they have a silver inlay. Again, even the inlay is monogrammed, but all this could be trimmed in different woods, different doors, different inlays, patterns, etc. All uh, rather lovely. We have this rather nice little space here, which is great for propping up a beer, but equally you can pop a laptop on it, uh, your tablet, and work from the cab seat which is quite nice because you've also then got snack access easily <laughs> to hand. We could make that your bar. We have another pantry below, which we've not even begun to use, but that one's quite deep. And the floor is raised just behind the cab so that your feet reach the ground when you're using the cab seats. Uh, again, an omission from a lot of vehicles of this variety but it also doesn't waste that space being a shoe locker or in my case a helmet and shoe locker so spinning around and it's little things like the use of stainless steel hinges throughout that really start to mark this vehicle out we got um underslung gas tanks as i mentioned before so constant monitor of how much gas is in there. We've got our control unit, which gives us the external and internal temperatures. <clears throat> the sun's just come out, so it's baking the top of the fan, even though it was cold a minute ago. UK, hey? So apparently it's 20 degrees out there, 23 in. This is the level of fresh water in the van. And over on the right is the battery for the camper side, the leisure side of the vehicle, time in the middle, press the battery button and it gives you this better display of vehicle battery, leisure battery. You can see we're draining 3.9 amps at the moment. That's because I've got a lot of electrical kit turned on in the back at the moment. I'll uh, show you all that in a second. Press the water one, it tells you how much water you've got left in your fresh water tank more accurately press and hold it it's quite interesting it goes into fill mode with a little tap logo and what that does is whilst you're filling the tank it sets off beepers at i think 85 and 90 um, percent so that you know where you are on the filling cycle even if you're not looking at this which is quite a handy thing um, you can set up various programs and settings we're not going to go into those 
12 volts can turn off and on the 12 volt lighting at a single button because there's a lot of lighting in here pumps on and off and auxiliary sockets on and off so this cupboard is the wardrobe so we have a wardrobe but again interesting to me because i'm a geek main fuse box for the vehicle and it's a great fuse box because any of the fuses below an led lights up next to the fuse pointing at it literally and saying this fuse is blown onboard charging system for when we're connected to 240 that's charging leisure batteries and running a lot of the 12 volt stuff breaker units main inlet points so you can get at it up top telescopic aerial and signal boosters for tv etc below that and confusingly my point because it's the opposite side to the kitchen we have this rather nice and very large cutlery department below that we have a dometic fridge that runs 12 volt 240 volt and gas then if we spin round, <clears throat> we have the kitchen or galley side of the van. But I'll just look at this flap first, which is enormous. You can raise this and it's on two, two beautiful stainless steel mechanism catches and enables you to use the front seat in the passenger side whilst working on stuff for the kitchen or actually eat at it and equally of course you've got a work surface on that side so you could eat at this end of the vehicle if you really wanted to <laughs> then sounds like a small thing but if you're motor caravanist you'll know that it's not sink with drainer that's luxury no little plastic add-on thing proper drainer metal mixer tap that folds flat for your hot and cold water Fabulous stuff. And the glass top means you can use it as a work surface. Then we have a full cooker with grill and oven. Again, nice glass top. This has got three gas burners and it's got a mains electric hot plate, which is brilliant when you're on a campsite which has got electric hookup because it saves your gas. Coming down. We have a large grill space. We have a pretty large oven by motorhome standards. And below that is a pan drawer, I guess you'd call it. Typically the sorts of thing you'd see below most traditional style cookers. At the top, have another cupboard which may become a bar 240 volt outlets there and if I look up with you another 240 volt outlet 12 volt outlet and the lighting for just above the cooker again you know stainless hinges we come up and we have same violet panels with silver inlays brushed aluminium sort of effect it might be brushed aluminium um, lift that as you can see this is where we're storing our crockery but again quality little things that make a big difference Full length stainless piano hinge, no saggy doors in this van. So you've got huge cupboards throughout all the way round the top of the van. Nice curved wooden panels, speakers connected to the head unit. touch lighting so let's 
come back to this area now. This is our washroom, I guess you'd call it. <clears throat> but we have a nice mirror for getting yourself ready in the morning. Loads of these nice little lights in the van. They're touch controlled, you press once and this background light comes on, gives you a nice ambient glow. Hit it again and you have spotlighting with this motif, which I think looks quite nautical because of the sort of stainless steel and wood um, angle, uh, obviously poiseable. If you touch and hold the light fitting, then these are dimmable. I'm not sure that's going to show up at all on film, but there you go. Just a nice little feature. Again, inlays everywhere. Open the door. <clears throat> Beautiful recessed lighting. Extractor fans. Mirror on that side. Mirror on that side. Storage built in. All this is beautifully, beautifully done and obviously waterproof. Storage for a large tabletop here. Outlet for blowing air heating. Shower tray, you just lift the little mat out. We have a bench toilet, which just gives you a little bit more space, quite generous with electric flush. Okay, it's the, the fittings, real metal, real glass. Um, hello, me. And plenty of storage. Shower head with trigger release so that you can um, save water, but you can lock the trigger if you wish. We have down here the controls for the shower, so separate to anything else. We have a drop down sink with a mixer tap, hot and cold water in the van, storage for your toothbrushes and soap. Because this is a wet room, shower room, with blown air heating, if you've got anything that you need to dry, you can hang it in here. Into the back, got this beautiful space. Really does remind me of a, a boat. Many boats have this sort of layout in the nose as a sort of um, day lounge, night bed area. So again, well trimmed, we've got these little trim rolls, keep your head safe, but also look great. Um, magazine rack here, which I think is gonna have my tablet and computer in it, if I'm absolutely honest. Um, lighting everywhere. Again, the half leather trimmed sofa, beautifully cushioned. This is not cheap and cheerful foam, trust me. It's all done rather well. Headrests in the corner. Again, trimmed out to match everything else. All of the wall trim is excellent. Up here, we have the controls for the Truma heating. This selects power, so two, I think that's 2,000 watts, 1,000 watts, might be wrong. Electrical supply, that's gas supply, that's 1,000 watts of electric and gas, 2,000 watts and, and, and gas. The wattage might not be a real thing. Here's the thermostat um, pickup, if you like. This is uh, setting, do you want hot water at 40 degrees, hot water at 60 degrees, off. Do you want heat or do you want heat and hot water? And in the middle dial, that sets how hot you want the room to be. And this little cupboard, which we can pin back, contains an Avtex TV, which is a British brand of um, pretty good 12 volt based TVs. Um, so this is able to run terrestrial Freeview TV off the aerial on the roof. It can run DVDs because if I just move, whoops, touching the volume controls there, this forward, there's a slot to put DVDs in there. Um, I've got a 
Chromecast system on it. So all I need to do is turn that on and hey presto, my favorite YouTube channels are available. Uh, oh, who's that bloke? Could really do the haircut, couldn't he? So you can watch my favorites while I'm away. And that will also enable me to get Netflix, Amazon Prime, all the usual suspects. In panel van storage can be one of the issues, um, but when we were doing our research, what we recognized quite early on is, if you haven't got a fixed bed, a lot of the time, a lot of your cupboards are taken up with extra cushions to make up the bed. This is not a van like that. Everything that you need is out all of the time and nothing needs to be stashed away to make the bed work. So storage is, as we said, up there is your bedding. There's a table leg, by the way, just to, while I'm passing it. Um, we have a little storage under this left-hand seat. Uh, just grab hold of a handle down here. That comes up. And you've got storage on the right hand side. That's just some covers for the seats at the moment that we've uh, put in. But this is taken up with the Truma boiler, combi boiler. And we've got blown air outlets down there and another 240 volt socket. The back bench does not have a hollow space below it because that's the boot that I showed you from the outside. But equally, you've got access to it from the inside as well. The right hand sofa, when you lift that one up, is essentially empty and does have a gap through into the boot. So you can put as long or larger things as you like in there. That box contains the pump to keep it nice and quiet. And down in the corner, it has two built-in um, detectors, a leaking LPG and a leaking carbon monoxide detector. And they're at ground level because heavier than air gases. You don't see that in minivans. So we've got plenty of storage and we're not using it because all of our clothing has been going in the top lockers, food's in the pantry, and I've shown you where the bedding is. So that is essentially empty all of the time at the moment. So the setup for the bed really couldn't be any easier. You've got these cushions going around the top there, but they effectively make a headboard. You don't have to move those unless you're over about, I would say, six foot two, in which case you just take them out of the way and drop them on the floor to give you that little bit of extra length. But making the bed is literally this easy. You slide that out you slide that out and then pull. Done. And obviously you do the same on the other side and you've got yourself a bed. Now this looks like, oh, that's gonna be a lump in the middle, but I have not noticed it. But if you had any concerns about that, then it's the work of seconds to basically say that cushion just got to slide over there and you put the two knee rolls on the outside when you're making up the bed, but I cannot feel it, trust me. Skylights are uh, hecky or hikey. Huge one in the back. Just do that. And you're sealed up. And you can black it out. Or you can keep the bugs out with this mesh screen or any combination thereof. In the front, we have a smaller skylight, same, same, and 
every window on the van has cassette blinds with mozzinets and insulated screens. If you want the big table up, you just take the little cap out of the floor, grab the table leg from above the door, drop it in and fetch your tabletop. And obviously you've got options to make it come out further across the two side seats or to give you more space around the seats like so. So hopefully you can see why we quite like this van. Everything about it exudes quality. It gives us this fabulous lounging area in the back, which is a great dining room, a great bedroom with very little effort to make up. No, it's not a fixed bed, which was fabulous, but you do give up nearly half your van in a van this size if you're gonna have a fixed bed. What has it not got? What's the problems? What's the things I'm already trying to improve? Because you know me, not a lot. It kind of ticks all the boxes straight off. I immediately put the um, I immediately put the Google Cast system in, so that we could watch YouTube on the road, which is important to me. It might not be so important to others. I think I will get a smaller round tabletop to fit onto this same leg um, that I can use as a coffee table. But you have these nice edges, ledges, shelves, so probably that's excessive. And the one must do, and it's ordered already, is I've got to fit a reversing camera to this vehicle. It does have through the vehicle view out the back using a normal mirror, so you can use that for driving, but I'm not good enough at judging the length, so I need the reversing camera. So I've got to fit that. That's no, no issue feel like I should feed the hide because I'm a leather man and I love my jags and so that really appeals to me. But initially, no massive mods are planned. I'm sure the head unit will get upgraded at some point and the biggest to do on it is re-blackening all those black plastics which are now grey around the outside of the van and I'm going to share exactly how I've started doing that. I'll show you the rest of it being done, assuming my experiments prove as successful as I think they're gonna be. So I've done the front, it's not quite finished, but I've already driven the van for mm, getting on a thousand miles probably and um, weathered it. And yeah, it's, it's looking very good. So there we are. It was genuinely sad to say goodbye to Ruby and to Alfie. Ruby went to the dealer that we bought this van off as part of a part exchange. And Alfie, I pushed out onto the front of our driveway, started cleaning it, ready to sell. And I had sold it within a few hours of putting a, a sign on the front just to somebody who drove past. Um, so, uh, I've said before, Volkswagens are not better than other vans. They're good. They are far more expensive. And what you get for that is the badge. You get the community, the hi everybody, but resale, easy. Everybody wants a Volkswagen. Hope you like Jazzy, our IH and we'll bring you more episodes about her as and when they happen. If you're enjoying our channel then don't forget to subscribe and click the little bell icon so you get notifications of new videos. And please give us a thumbs up or thumbs down and you can share the videos. And below the video is always the area where you can comment and get involved with the chat.